Okay, I'm using our science building on campus to talk about basically just looking at a scene and being able to edit it by looking at it and seeing simple shapes. So, and I'm using this front view deliberately because I want to keep it really simple and not have to talk too much about perspective yet. So what I'm looking at here is right in front, we've got this big, simple rectangle. And then within that, we've got this one right dead center. Now we've got this triangle right on top. You can kind of see the point here. We're just starting to build. There's a sphere. And then pull our lines down. And then in the, the, the roof line here is basically another rectangle with just angled lines. Another sphere. Pull our lines down. And you're going to see when I start going into the drawing how I build on top of this and start adding texture and a little bit of um, surface detail and that kind of thing. A couple more angled lines. Then we've got a box sitting right there. And I'm always matching up my shapes to where the shape next to it is. So that kind of tells me how to place it. There's a sphere up here. And then I can go into my secondary shapes like this uh, rectangle right here for the balcony. Got another sphere. So you can see how much we're repeating shapes. We've got another rectangle here. And then we've got this uh, lamp right here. And that'll give us a nice overlapping element. And we're going to need a lot of those. Just It'll create a sense of depth. And then I'm just blocking out the tree here. And I just put it there as a placeholder. So I don't want to start drawing things around it or behind it. And then I'm going to cover it up with a tree anyway. So I don't really want to do that. So this is probably just how I want to look at it, just very simply, and then we'll jump over here to paper here in a second. Okay, I'm using a Pilot G2 here, and I'm just using that by itself because I just want to keep this simple on location here. And I'm just going to start blocking this in, just like I kind of talked about um, as we were looking at the building itself. Little simple um, shape elements like a triangle, some rectangles, and then I'm popping in that center one. And one of the main things I'm going to start doing as I move through here is once I put a shape down, then I can, I can measure where the next shape goes because I have something to measure it against. So right here, I'm just trying to place this line right there, and it fell right about in the middle of that rectangle. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm looking for how I can measure things against each other. And right here, just up front, I'm blocking out that tree just so it's sitting there and I know where it is. And I'm not gonna go too much into foliage on this one because we're gonna talk about more of that later. Um, but I'll put a little bit of texture in there. Now notice here too, I'm being really loose because I can always come back in here and I'm going to clean up my line later. So I'm not really too concerned with that. I'm more worried about proportion and placement at this point. And we'll kind of talk about how to clean up those lines and how to kind of solve certain problems instead of erasing. Because obviously with a pen, you're not going to be able to erase. And even with a pencil, we don't want to do a lot of erasing. It just, it kind of makes your drawing very uptight. Now, normally, I, I'm turning my sketchbook or my clipboard or whatever I'm drawing on. I'm turning it a lot to maximize the angle that I'm throwing a line down on. We're not doing it quite as much here just because I'm, you know, I want to keep it in the camera frame. But no, make sure that you're, you're turning that page 
at an angle so your line is easy to hit or if it's an ellipse especially with an ellipse you want to turn that board so you can hit that ellipse or that line at a convenient sort of angle that's comfortable otherwise they'll just really get away from you and they get really wonky Okay, at this point, I'm kind of into secondary and now probably hitting like tertiary shapes, probably. So think the big shape, then you're going to go to your next smallest, your next smallest, and then your smallest shapes are basically your detail. Then you can fine tune a few things. But just think it's just progressively smaller shapes, basically. And you want to start with the big shapes first and work methodically to, to your small shapes. The, the entrance door to this building has sort of a scallop in it. So really what you're doing when you do these kind of things is you're kind of finding a shorthand for that. I'm drawing this all in location right now. So I have to be pretty economical in how I'm going to handle this because you're not going to sit here for four hours and do this. This is probably normally for me probably about a 10 minute drawing that I'm going to do here. Now, when I get to this point, I'm starting to get a rhythm going and I'm starting to see shapes and it's starting to go a lot faster now. When I started this, I, I wasn't warmed up and now I'm starting to get a little bit warmed up and I'm starting to see things and if there's a rhythm that starts to happen with it. Okay, I'm starting to reinforce a few lines now. And what I usually do is if you look at that right there, I'm heavy enough that line. I'm doing that to start pulling it forward because that's an eave sort of hanging over. I also do it based on where the direction of light is. Anything that's away from that light, I'll heavy up. Anything that's underneath, and I, and I also use it for separation. So in that case, heavying up that line on that eave is more of a separation thing. I want to pull it in front of the building itself. Now I'm going to go in here and pop in some of these little hand reels that are out in front. And what these things are all starting to do is create things in front of other things. So overlap. Just like I was saying earlier, that those lamps are a really nice example of that. I didn't put them in this. But usually I'll grab those kind of things. I'll darken them up with a nice dark value. And then it'll kind of start pushing everything back. And this is just a little bit hatching to separate the interior uh, where the door is, which is catching a shadow from that overhang. You know, I'm just going to kind of pop in a little bit of the walkway coming towards you at some point here. I want to indicate a little bit of a trash can right here. I kind of look around for anything I can use as, a, again, an overlapping element. And it also breaks certain silhouettes that are happening in here. There's going to be a planter behind that trash can. And if I can, I'll get it a little higher so it overlaps. So I want to get a lot of things overlapping each other. Now this that I'm adding to the windows, I've got enough shapes now where I feel comfortable starting to add a little bit of a... To me, I look at it as texture. Some people call it detail. I kind of look at it as density. I want some density in the drawing, which makes it start to feel a little more complex than it actually is. Right here, I'm going to add a little bit of that foliage back there. At this distance, you're really seeing texture. And at this distance, even when you go into things like shingles, you're usually basically seeing texture. So I'm going to start indicating some, uh, some, indi some indication of some texture in here.
what I'm starting to indicate here are the direction of the shingles. This is like a Spanish tile roof. So they come down in a very definitive direction. And then I'll start building over that. So what I'm starting to put on the end there is the way that they, and I've observed this a lot, so I'm kind of used to it. They kind of do this interlocking pattern when they come under. And again, that's sort of a shorthand. But it gives that, that edge like a nice finish so everything's not a hard edge. This is now a more irregular edge, which is, gives us a little bit of contrast in our drawing. And then I'm just indicating here and there some of the individual sh overlapping shingles, but I don't want to put those everywhere. I just want to kind of indicate a little bit of them. And you can see here, as soon as you put a little bit of texture on it, the drawing starts to get more interesting. And I'm reinforcing some lines there based on the same thing as before, where the light is. And if you notice, I kind of swept them. I turned the board and I swept them so I can clean them up. And I'm putting a little bit of a serrated edge on the over... That type of tile, it's sort of, they sit on top of each other, so it creates sort of a serrated edge. And a lot of the times I'm doing that, not just for accuracy, I'm doing that because, again, it gives me an interesting finish to my shape. Now this little dome on the top of this, there's a little bit of verticality to the sidelines on it, but basically it's half of a sphere. So just kind of think of it that way. Now at this point, I'm going to start popping some lines and reinforcing things. Before this, I've been placing all the shapes. When I get it a little further along, then I'm going to want to start separating out lines and showing where the light is and cleaning up lines and starting to refine a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to start indicating a few leaves. I'm not going to go very far with this. And I'm just going to, if, if you watch this, I'm going to put a little bit of leaf shapes. I'm going, to, I'm going to mass a lot of that tree a little bit. And we'll go into foliage a lot more later. I don't want to get too much into it on this. On this one, I want to just focus on these simple shapes and how we're building a drawing that looks a little more complex using those simple shapes.
I'm carrying the tree over to the over the roof line so I can break the roof line. Because I always want to break that hard geometry. Otherwise, you can just get a big sort of boxy shape. And sometimes I'll, even if the tree doesn't overlap it, I'll add it. Or I'll put something behind a hard roof line to just soften up and give it something organic against that hard edge. I'm going to start indicating a trash can here further in the foreground. So I want to get some things in the foreground now. So we're getting things that push and give us a little bit of depth and kind of enforce our foreground, middle ground, background idea. I'm also going to place this bench right here. It gives me another big object right in the foreground. Now I'm just going to go in and add some random ground texture, some trunk texture, just anywhere I can just add some texture that's not something geometric and I can get something organic in there. Now I'm adding a few things over here to the right, and I'll put a few to the left, but I'm going to basically just let this vignette off on either end, and as it comes towards you. It's a good way to do that because a lot of people get really stuck on trying to get everything to fit into their page, and then it goes off the page, and they keep struggling with it. And a good thing to do is just kind of hone in on the thing that you want to really emphasize. In this case, it'd probably be more or less the middle of the drawing. And then let everything sort of fade off from there. Your line quality drops off. Your line weight drops off. And it also works really well when you make a mistake. And I do this all the time. 
and something goes off the page and I vignette it off the page so it looks like I meant to do it. So I make a kind of design um, statement out of it. I'm really punching those lines because I want those to hang over a little bit more. So you can see they kind of come forward a little bit. And I'm just basically going through here and adding value, punching line. I'm going to leave it fairly loose. Now, always turn that board. This is a good example of that. So I can get a nice clean line because it's in a comfortable position. And you can see how that sweeping those lines is starting to clean them up and it's starting to pop them out. I'm adding a little hint of a tree back here just to just to break up that hard line right there. So there's something organic against that hard roof line. So this is just sort of final tweaky stuff. I'm just seeing little things I can add when I can call it finished up to this point. And I think that's probably fine. I think that's enough uh, for this. So I'll just leave it here. And then we'll go in more into foliage and all those other things later on. <laughs> 